Oh man, folks. This is what I was afraid of. Well, folks, I don't think we're going any farther than this. I was planning on heading up to a lake just over there. And uh, as you can see, we still got a little bit of snow in the road. I managed to make it through a little snow drift over there, but I'm a little scared about going through this one because that's a long stretch. And uh, it looks like it gets pretty deep. Better safe than sorry. That really sucks though. Looks like we're not gonna be fishing one of my favorite lakes, so that's too bad. Let's go find somewhere else. Let's go turn this puppy around. Guys, I had it all planned out too. I was gonna go to this lake, catch some big old tiger trout for y'all, do a little camping right on the bank of the lake. Oh man, I have no other plans, honestly. When life gives you lemons, throw them right back and add some lemons of your own. Didn't even have to kick it in four wheel drive that time. Well folks, since we can't fish that lake, I think I'm gonna stop off at a little creek up here. Try to catch some little brook trout, you know? Haven't caught a fish all day. And I don't know, we might go to some other creeks, maybe some other lakes. I don't really have a plan, you know? We gotta find a camping spot for tonight. Should be fun. I did wanna fish that lake, but heck, as long as I'm up here, just running around wherever I want, I'm happy. Here we are guys, the creek is right over there. It's been a while since I've fished this creek. I'm excited. Well, you guys are gonna be sad to learn that I recently snapped another fishing pole in half. I mean, a couple camping trips ago, I snapped one, you guys saw that. And then the other day I was just kind of fishing for fun and the same exact thing happened. I cast it, snaps right in half. And you know what guys, I think it's because I left it in the back of my truck. I thought that since it was warming up, you know, it was only getting like, pfft, I don't even know, 50 to 60 degrees at night. I could just leave my fishing pole in the back of my truck because I'd probably use it the next day. But uh, I guess it got too cold because the second I cast it, snapped in half. And anyway, folks, it's all good because I have plenty of fishing poles. You collect a few over the years if you keep fishing. A lot of you guys wonder what setup I have. I'm not super into equipment. I just like catching fish. But we have here an ugly stick, ultralight rod, six foot six inch, super, super soft tip. I really like this style of rod. A little bit windy today, folks. In fact, there's never a day here where it's not at least a little bit windy, so it's actually pretty nice for this area. Starting off the day, folks, with a little yellow rooster tail spinner. I caught a bunch of big brook trout in one of my last videos at a lake with this spinner. So uh, why wouldn't it work for the littler ones? I missed one under that bridge, but nothing else. Another thing about this, folks, I did not bring any night crawlers with me on this trip. So we're relying completely on artificials to catch us our dinner. This looks like a good spot. Oh, oh, missed one, missed one. Right there, right there. These fish are, oh, 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 missed another one, missed another one. They're biting right there. These fish, a lot of these fish are so tiny, so tiny they might not even be able to get their mouths around it. I've always had a love-hate relationship with this stream. I always like, I either come here and I catch one or two fish and it's not enough to make a video, but then there's like a couple times a year where I'll come here and absolutely slam, or it's just dead. But this stream is really big on fly fishing, so maybe I just, shouldn't be regular fishing. Maybe I should start fly fishing this stuff. Oh my gosh, folks, I got a fish. I got a fish. I didn't even reel. What? I cast it and he was on. That was crazy. Oh my gosh, guys. First fish of the day, check this out. <laughs> guys, check this little thing out. I feel like sometimes they're prettier when they're smaller because you can their their colors and patterns are just so defined. Get this little guy off. With these little ones, you want to handle them gently. Do not squeeze them at all. But as long as you can get them in and out of the water quick like that, they should be good to go. Let's see if we can get another fish like that. That one bit right when it hit the water. Oh, man. 
missed him. Yeah, there we go. There we go, folks. Finally, another one. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Another beautiful brookie. Not even big enough to keep, but it's just so much fun to chase after these little dudes. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, he got off. Shoot. Oh, I had like a three incher bite it. I hooked like a three incher for a second. Oh, that was so cute. Look at him. I can see. Oh my gosh, folks. GoPro can't pick it up, I'm sure, but. Guys, little tiny, like four or five inch trout just swimming everywhere. Oh, oh, hooked one. Dang it. Missed another one right behind that rock. Just bite it, dude. Oh, oh, there's one. Got him. No, I yanked back on it too hard. I yanked it right out of his mouth. Look, very, oh, I know better than that. Come on. Oh, got one. Oh my gosh, I did it again. I am such an idiot. Ah, oh, I looked away for a second and it caught me off guard. Look, there's fish down there. There's a little brookie right there. Two of them, three, four, five. Dude, there's tons of fish down there. Ooh. Oh, got him, got him, got him. Keep tension, get him in quick. Finally, this is ridiculous. It's taken me forever to catch this one. I've, I've, mm. Another little brook. Too small to keep though. We are looking to keep a couple tonight. That is a nice fish right there. Beautiful little brook. Get him back quick. It's the best thing you can do for a fish, folks. Get it in and out of the water as fast as you can. Oh, look, they're still surfacing right there. Oh, got him. Oh, that's a smaller one. Nope. Hey, there we go, folks. We're, we're, we're finding some fish. Finally, this one is probably a female. With brook trout especially, it's pretty easy to tell the males from the females. Males always have dark colors and bigger mouths. So I'd uh, probably have to assume this is a female. A little bit of useless information there for anyone who's interested. Just another little guy. They're so cute. So cute. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Again, I am so dumb. Yanked the spinner right out of his mouth. Clear back here. Wow, I'm having a tough day today. <laughs> oh, wow, folks. Could that timing have been any better? Oh, life. <laughs> Ugh, let's try that again. All right, guys, so I spent the last hour and a half walking upstream. Now I'm gonna walk downstream, see if the fish get any bigger or more plentiful plentiful down here because now we're looking for food we're gonna try to catch a couple little brook trout that are big enough to keep which could be a difficult task oh man did you guys see that that was a big and that was a keeper came right from behind that rock got him got him whoa folks Boom, that is how we do it. Right there, missed him the first time, came back the second time, got him. Oh man, look at this guy though. Oh wow, wow, he is skinny. That is one skinny fish. He's the biggest one all day, but he's really long. He's like paper thin. This one I think is a good candidate to cook up. I'm gonna bonk him over the head. If we can get one more from here, that'll be good. Got him, got him, got him. Got him. Is that a keeper? Look at that. Uh, I don't know, man, that is close. I mean, in any other circumstance, I would not keep this fish, no way, but fishing is pretty tough right now. You know what, I'm gonna send it. Well, that does it for this creek. We caught some brook trout, missed about 50. Really frustrating, but we caught some fish. We have a little bit of dinner, but I'm gonna go to some other creeks now that you guys have probably seen me fish before. And I know you guys really do like the creek fishing, so I hope you enjoy this. But anyway, guys, let's head to that other creek. Ah, gosh dang it, folks. So I'm at another creek, and for the past 20 minutes I've been recording, uh, my microphone wasn't unplugged, so I don't have any audio. And I caught a brook trout and a brown trout. I kept the brown trout, 
So now we have two brookies and a brown. Hopefully my audio is working now. So folks, this creek is pretty cool. I've caught brook trout, rainbow, cutthroat, and brown trout from it. So we have the chance of catching four different species. I've already caught two of them. I've also seen a few sucker fish here and there. Looks like they're getting ready to spawn. Dang, look at all these sucker fish. Oh, there's another one. Ha! Oh, there's a little brook trout. <laughs> Whoa! Holy crap, folks. Look at that. Freaking soaked. At least once a trip, I seem to fall like that. Just totally eat it. Folks, that creek didn't turn out to be as fire as I was hoping. It looks like there's a storm rolling in. It started getting really windy and it looked like there were some pretty mean storm clouds coming in. So hopefully it doesn't pour on us. I think right now I'm gonna go look for a campsite. Yeah, probably we'll go fishing a little bit later, but I just sure hope the weather holds off. Well guys, here we are. This is actually the campsite that I was planning on, hoping would be available. Turns out there's nobody up here, so it wasn't taken, which is nice because I've camped here before and this is absolutely my favorite spot. It is time for my favorite part of the day, dinner, of course. But before we do that, I wanna give a big shout out to Jorgensen's Power Sports down in Richfield, Utah for hooking me up with some supplies for this camping trip. Guys, check this out. We have here a pyro putty lighter with some pyro putty. If you guys don't know what they, I'll show you guys all this stuff in a second, but basically this is just a lighter with some fire starter. I've never used it before, should be cool to try out. Pretty unique, you guys will see in a second. Then we have here a fillet knife. We, look, we have a real flex pack, outdoor edge fillet knife kit. We open it up here. Look at that, we have three sizes of fillet knives. I mean, just look at this one, folks. <laughs> we flaying up some 20 pound king salmon with this puppy. And it also comes with a knife sharpener right here, so that's nice. Probably gonna be using the smaller fillet knife today for those little tiny trout. But this is also good because no longer do we have to use the same knife that we just gutted a fish with to cut our vegetables. So no more cross contamination, which is good. And guys, last but certainly not least, we have a dark energy power bank. Look at this, we have my GoPro batteries charging along with my phone. Guys, I've been charging my phone and GoPro batteries all day. And look at this, still has a full charge. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But we have four bars still going strong. It's waterproof. And there's even some videos I've seen on YouTube of, pe of people like running these over with cars, throwing them at walls, and they are just indestructible. They do not break. And I'm really glad it's waterproof because I mean, I've dropped GoPros in the water non-waterproof ones probably four or five times so this will likely end up in the water at some point so that's good it's waterproof i know for me especially i've always had a struggle with keeping gopro batteries charged i'll be in the middle of like making a video or catching a fish and my gopro just dies and i have no more batteries because i have to charge them in my truck which number one drains the battery and number two i always have to be near it at some point if i want charged cameras but no longer do i have to worry about that because i can just throw this in my backpack while it's charging up some gopros and i'm good to go and i know all of you don't make videos but i mean if you want to charge your phone if you're out on a camping trip for like a week or something or you want to charge your laptop trail cam whatever you want this little guy will get it done clip it on your backpack or on your hip you're good to go. So I'm definitely gonna be taking this with me on all my camping trips from now on. And I'll be able to backpack into some lakes where uh, I could stay overnight. Cause now I have batteries charged and I can just make a video. All right guys, time to build a fire. We're gonna be using here the pyro lighter. Guys, check this out. That is crazy. This is not like a regular lighter. It's actually powered by plasma, I believe. The fourth element of matter, or I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but guys, literally a laser right there. It is rechargeable. I've been uh, charging all day on that power bank and uh, you can get up to 300 lights per charge off this bad boy. And then it also comes with some pyro putty. This is some fire starter, basically. I'm using the summer orange right now because there's actually a couple different kinds. They have a winter version where the fibers are a little bit thinner, easier to start in the colder air. And this is the first time using this, so let's crack this open. 
Oh, okay. Look at that. Doesn't smell like orange, but... Oh, this is kind of weird. This kind of reminds me of candle wax. It kind of has the texture and feel of candle wax. It's supposed to light up really good. But on the bottom of our lighter here, we flip that up. And this is actually a little container meant to store the putty. So we can just grab a little of our putty and put it right there in the container. Close it up. You're good to go. You got a lighter and your fire starter all in one. And this is waterproof. Also very essential since, at least like me, I'm always around water. In fact, we're going to get rid of this dry grass. Then we're going to grab some of this putty. And then we're going to kind of separate it like this. We're going to set it right in the middle of the fire. We got some sticks here. We'll set on top of it. So we'll go ahead and flip out our lighter here. And let's see if this actually works. Oh, oh, looks like it's working. Oh yeah, look at that. Catch some of these sticks on fire. Folks, look at that. That lit right up. Nice. This is the first time ever using this thing. Look at that gnarly looking laser. You don't want to get your fingers anywhere near close to that. Man. By the way guys, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. But like I said, Jorgensen's Power Sports down in Richfield, they did hook me up with this stuff from their store. If you guys want to go down there, I know I've got a lot of local guys who watch my channel. So if any of you guys want to go ahead in there, check them out, tell them that I sent you. That would be awesome. Or I can leave a link to their website down, the, down in the description. You can find this lighter over there, that fillet knife kit, and that power bank, that dark energy power bank. It is a little on the pricier side, but when you think about it, I could either spend a hundred bucks on that, or I could buy 20 different GoPro batteries. Even then I wouldn't be able to charge my phone or anything like that when I'm out hiking. So definitely a good investment in my opinion. And they've also got everything from RVs to bikes to guns and ammo. So definitely be sure to go give them some love. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we got our fire going. It's time to cook some dinner. I am starving. We're gonna get these fish with one of these knives. I think we're gonna go for the smallest knife. We're gonna use this as a cutting board. Grab our smallest little brook trout right here. But you know what, why don't we go ahead and measure this guy. Ooh, eight inches on the dot. That is a little fish. Ooh, these knives are nice and sharp. I haven't sharpened these. Cut the little head off. It feels kind of weird gutting a trout this small. Rip the guts out. Then we have here our biggest trout of the day. Really long and skinny brook trout, let's see. Ooh, he clocks in at just over 11 inches. 11 and a quarter, maybe. Last but not least, we have our little brown trout that is just barely gonna touch nine inches. So we're gonna kinda have a multi-species catch and cook here. See which tastes better, a brown trout or a brook trout. Make sure to keep our knife nice and clean. That looks clean to me, don't you think? All right, guys, so we have our fish here, brown trout, brook trout, brook trout. What I'm gonna do, I've been letting them dry out on this log. I'm gonna skin them because uh, we're actually gonna put them in some batter and it would be a lot easier without the skin. You just take your thumb behind a little fin right there and uh, you can just pull all that skin away from the meat. Sometimes a little meat comes away with it, but it's not too big a deal. So a little meat comes off, but for the most part, we got all of our meat on there. We'll do that to this other little guy. Look at how tiny this little thing is. It's so cute. I don't think I've ever eaten a trout this small before. So we have the brown trout right here, along with the brook trout. A little bit mangled up. Those were a little bit harder to skin since they were so little, but uh, we still got those. And as for this bigger trout, we're actually gonna save that for tomorrow ahead and set our little grill grate on. So as for our recipe today, folks, we have here some Louisiana kitchen fish fry breading mix. I actually have cooked trout in this stuff before. Um, I just never made a video on it as far as I can remember. So first thing we'll do is add a little of this to the bag. 
not too much. These are some pretty small fish, so probably about that much is good. And I know from experience with using this stuff, it's plenty salty on its own. I cooked bluegill up with this one time and I added extra salt to the batter and it was just way too salty. This is seasoned enough for us, so we're not gonna add anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and crack an egg into this bag. Ooh, scramble it up. And we'll take our fish, add them to the egg mixture. Get them all nice and coated. Add them into the bag. Just like so. And then we'll shake this around. Make sure they're well coated. Place it in there, that's, that's plenty right there. There's probably gonna be an explosion here. And there we go, we have our little, this is the littlest brook trout. We'll set him in there. And we have our brown trout. Nice. These shouldn't take too long to cook. They're pretty small, I mean, clearly. Flip them over here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm excited to try these. And then folks, we're gonna use our uh, new fillet knife kit as a cutting board. We have one of our knives right here, not the one that I used to clean the fish with. We're gonna slice up some onions to uh, cook in the oil. Never tried it before, thought it might be kind of good. About like that much. We're also gonna take a potato and make some fries. And then I'm actually gonna take some of these little onions and uh, cover them in that fish fry batter. I don't know how good that's gonna be because it's meant for fish, but I can't imagine it being too bad. We'll add a few potatoes in there as well. And let them all just cook and mix together. I wanna try this fish out. Look at that. Looks like little chicken tenders. Let's try a little piece of this brook trout. I don't even need a fork for this. That fish fry is really good. Didn't add any salt or anything else to it, and uh, that has plenty of flavor. Look at that. That is orange meat. I think it's the best fish I've ever cooked in this batter before. Let's try this brown trout. That's good too. That's really good. Oh yeah, these are done for sure. Look at that, folks. Fish, chips, and onions. I will say that uh, that uh, breading didn't really stick to the onion rings at all. It's still fried onions though, so it should be pretty good. Dust them with some salt and pepper. Ooh. That came out a lot faster than I was expecting. Just dust them with a little bit of salt. And there we go. Fish and chips, boy. The onion rings, they sort of just got flatter. So they're just kind of like these little paper thin, wiry onions. For dessert, we have here some raspberry muffin mix. Now I've made cinnamon rolls before, but I've never made muffins out here in the woods. So we're gonna try that today. Recipe calls for quarter cup of milk, but I don't have milk, so I just use water, no big deal. The box says it makes about six muffins or so. So if you guys watched that video where I made cinnamon rolls, you saw that I cooked them with two cast iron frying pans and just kind of put some coals on top and they worked out really, really well. This time I have these little uh, cupcake pans. I got these at the dollar store. Pretty thin, so I don't know how well they're gonna work. Hopefully they don't get a whole burn through them. But basically I'm gonna pour the batter in there, close it down like this and just set it on top throw some coals on top of it as well. It should work out pretty good. One thing that I don't have that I forgot are those little um, cupcake paper cup things that you're supposed to put inside here. I forgot those, so we're just gonna have to uh, do it without them. Hopefully it works out. So there we go, folks. We have our muffins all laid out. I hope they don't rise too high. I hope I put the right amount of batter in there. 
I don't want them to like rise too high or not be able to cook thoroughly. I'm gonna take this other side, place it right on top of it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and set these right above the coals right there. And we need heat coming up from not only the bottom, but from the top too. So I'm gonna grab a couple coals, red hot glowing coals, and set them right on top like that. Just like that. So we'll let these guys sit for about mm, five minutes or so, and then we'll check back, see if they're actually cooking. All right, let's see how they're looking. I've been adding fresh coals to the top. I feel like this is gonna be really good or really bad. Oh, okay, uh, kind of in between actually. They're kind of cooking. They smell really good. They actually smell really good. Not exactly the look I wanted, but they're getting there, I guess. There's still a little bit of doughiness in the center, so I don't think they're quite done. We'll put our lid back on, throw some more coals on top, give it another five minutes, and they should be done. All right. Eh. Well, folks, here we go. Not exactly what I was picturing in my mind. I was imagining just perfect little shaped muffins, just with some butter on top. Not exactly. It's all about how they taste. Aside from how they look, they do smell really good. So we're gonna have to leave them in the pan, but let's try these guys out. That one doesn't look half bad. That one rose better than all of them. Let's try this. Guys, they taste amazing. Like, they taste really good. I don't think I've ever had raspberry muffins. I've had blueberry, but never raspberry. That is really good. They, I mean, that, that, that cooked pretty good. Nice and fluffy, golden crispy. I don't know why the other ones didn't rise. So the taste is definitely there. Presentation, we need to work on that a little bit. After a long day of fishing, this is nice. So folks, before it gets too dark, let me show you what I've got going on. We're gonna be sleeping in the back of the truck. Back there we have this sleeping pad and all that kind of stuff. So we're not gonna get too crazy with it. We're just gonna be doing some truck camping right here. Should be fun. But now guys, I wanna go fishing now. After dinner, now I wanna go fishing. But by the time I get there, it'll probably be totally dark. So I guess I'm just gonna go to bed early. <sighs> but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning guys. It's a little bit windy today. So uh Yeah, and it's a little chillier. But anyway folks, we're just gonna go ahead and skip breakfast this morning and uh, Just go fishing. I've got a creek. I want to show you guys that I've never been to on a video But uh, it's pretty good. So let's head on over there Well folks, we've made our way to a little hidden creek in the mountains this little tiny stream is absolutely full of brook trout. Let's give it a try. All right, so I've got a little tiny spinner on. These trout are like micro, even smaller than the ones we were catching yesterday. So it might be kind of difficult, but it can be done. You know, this trail goes on for like eight miles or so. And there's actually some lakes up here that you can hike into. I don't think we're gonna do that today because uh, it's a pretty far hike, but at the very least we can catch some fish from the stream. Guys, check this out. So the trail opens up into this little meadow area and I've caught fish here before. A lot of times you can see fish scatter back and forth, but I'm not seeing anything yet. Gotta be really stealthy. That's a good looking spot. Man, folks, I can't see one fish right here. Look at this, folks. Isn't it crazy how fish can survive year round in just little tiny, teeny, tiny, look, look at, there, there's some fish. Little tiny minnows. <laughs> so not actual catchable fish, but there are some little minnows down there. Little baby brook trout. It's crazy how fish can just survive in little tiny streams like this year round. 
All right, guys, we're starting to get into some deeper water here. This looks a lot more fishy. <gasps> There's fish, 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 fish. Hey, guys, I saw a fish. Fish confirmed. Oh, look at him. Look at him. There's fish right here. They're going swimming back and forth. Gosh, dang it. These guys are probably going to be really tricky to catch. Look at them. There's tons of them. Don't want anything to do with my spinner. Well, it's good to know that there's still fish in here. That is good. Look at, look, fish, fish. Can you guys see them? Oh, there's fish right here, tons of them. Guys, this is so cool. This is so cool. Wow, they don't want a spinner though. Well, folks, didn't catch anything from that stream. And we're at the end of the trail. Ah, that's really too bad. I was hoping to catch something out of there. I don't know, last time I was there, there was like, tons of fish and uh, I was catching them left and right. This time they just seemed a little more skittish. Well I guess we'll head back to the truck and uh, go try somewhere else. Folks we're gonna cook up some breakfast before we go out fishing again. It's more like brunch now. I mean the sun's all the way over there. On the menu today we have some sausage, hot sausage. Along with that little brook trout we caught yesterday we're gonna cook that guy up this morning. Oh yeah. You know what folks, this sausage is already flavored, but just for the heck of it, we're gonna add some chipotle roasted garlic seasoning. I've never tried this before actually, I just picked it up at Walmart. Take our little brook trout. And look at that, you see all that sausage grease? We're just gonna set them right in that. Right there. Mmm, mmm. We're just gonna let that fish cook in the, all the sausage juice and uh, hopefully it absorbs some of that flavor. And then we'll add a little bit of chipotle to them, chipotle seasoning to them in a minute. All right, we'll go ahead and get this sausage out so it doesn't burn. And then we'll let that fish just cook in that sausage grease. Brook trout and sausage. Wow, that sausage is very hot. We're gonna try some of this chipotle seasoning on the fish. It's pretty spicy actually. Just a little bit. All right, let's see how this fish is. Does it taste like sausage? Kinda not really. I don't know, let's try the fish and the sausage. That's good. We are definitely getting our protein this morning. So I'm driving to this little spot and it is so freaking windy. We've got hurricane force winds out there. I mean, you guys probably aren't even gonna be able to hear me with this audio. I don't know, we'll give it a try. We have to at least catch one more fish before we end this video. Here we go. Oh man, whoa. Oh. Alright guys, so the wind isn't as bad down here, but it's still pretty bad. But hopefully you guys can hear me somewhat. So there's a waterfall over there that's shooting water into the creek. And then right here is the actual like spillway thing. Once they release water from here, that's when it just shoots a ton of fish out. And this spot is absolutely stacked up with giant tiger trout. But I think we're just gonna walk down the creek, see if we can find any fish. Cross our fingers. <gasps> Guys, I'm seeing fish. Just small fish, but there's still fish. Got him, got him, got him. There's a fish. Got him. What do we have here? A splake. Guys, check it out. We'll flip him up here. Woo! New species, baby. 
I know to a lot of you, this probably just looks like a regular brook trout, but it's actually a splake, which is a hybrid between a lake trout and a brook trout. There's a lot of ways you can tell, but their dots are a little bit different. Brook trout have really, really red dots and blue dots, and this one just has little yellow halos, and it's got a fork in the tail. And I know that there's just splake in here, so that's what this is. We're not getting skunked today. Beautiful little fish. See if there's another one down there. Another one. Next cast, folks. Look at that. A little bit bigger. We have another splake. The key is to go really, really slow along the bottom. And they're picking it up. And we'll just let them go. There's not too many of these in this creek anyway. Oh. See you, buddy. Oh, fish on, fish on. I casted right behind that rock and had a hook and I had a fish instantly. He hit it instantly. Dang, man. That's cool. What do we have? Oh, that was another splake. Another splake. Dang it. <laughs> Guys, we're getting into some fish now. There we go. Fish on, fish on. What do we got? Another splake. Guys. I don't know if I've caught so many splake from this creek at once. What is this, number four? So beautiful. See ya. There we go, another one. Oh, this is the biggest one. Biggest one of the day for sure. Look at this puppy. Woo! Eat him up here. Guys, that is a nice fish right there. Biggest one of the day, probably about 13 inches or so. I'm after tigers, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. Oh, right there, dang, oh! I was pulling it out of the water and this guy smacked it. This is, oh man, this is so much fun. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, look at that, folks. We have a little fish right here. It might have been one of the ones I caught. He's just chilling here. Oh, well, <laughs> there he goes. Well, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. We had a fun time out here. Fished four different creeks, caught like three different species of trout. That was really awesome. If you guys are liking these videos, definitely let me know because I'm really enjoying making them. And guys, don't forget to check out Jorgensen's website linked in the description below. And like I said, if you're local, you can go check out their store down in Richfield. They've got tons of stuff over there, including the stuff you guys saw me use. And they've got RVs, dirt bikes, all that kind of stuff down there. So if you're into that, definitely go check them out. But anyway, folks, I'm going to head out of here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.